The two cars I always wanted to own uh, were a lightweight Porsche 911 and a Jaguar E-Type. The reasons behind these two choices were I was down at the Targa Florio in the late 1960s and uh, I met a racing driver, a Swiss racing driver called Joe Siffert and he was a works Porsche driver uh, at the time and he was driving a Porsche 908 Mark III at the Targa Florio and he gave me very kindly a lift back to the hotel in his company Porsche 911 but I was astounded by this little car. I vowed that I would own a Porsche 911. It took me until 20, about 20, 22 years ago and I found a 911 Club Sport one day Chris Phillips telephoned me and he said that uh, he wanted to buy another racing car, I think an AC Cobra, and he could do with a little bit more finance. So almost before he finished the sentence, I said, I'll buy your CS. I didn't ask the price, stupidly, and the deal was done. It was far more than I expected to have to pay. It was taking all my savings, plus I had to borrow a lot of money. I'd never even seen the car, but I knew Chris was a fairly fastidious man, uh, and when I got there, I wasn't disappointed. The car was immaculate. Hello everyone, welcome to 27, and I'm with Mike Wilde. I'm gonna be driving his two cars today. First of all, we're starting off with his 911 CS. Now, if you haven't, please make sure you watch the previous video to this in which Mike talks about his previous career, which ended up with a few races in F1 as well, and the whole story behind everything. So make sure you watch that if you haven't. This is a CS, as Mike has pointed out quite rightly. So this is a lightweight version. It really is, in many ways, an RS uh, in anything but name. Um, so, for example, it's been lightened quite considerably. Um, so I believe that it's got so no electric windows, for example. Um, what else is, uh, have they taken out, Mike? I think there was no. There's no sound deadening. That's right. They um, didn't underseal the cars. Uh, there's no soundproofing. There's an uprated close ratio G50 gearbox, and uh, it also the engine is blueprinted and it has hollow valves to increase the uh, rev range from, I think, a six and a half and uh, the CS uh, revs to six eight. Wow. It just makes it a much livelier engine. Um, yeah. It comes alive at about four and a half thousand RPM. So um, the CS really is a much sharper car to me. Yeah. Okay, also I know there's no rear wiper, so I mean they went to sort of quite considerable lengths to, uh, to make the car lighter. And I can tell you it does actually feel quite different. It's, it's more lively. Um, the engine doesn't feel a million miles away, perhaps a touch revier. Um, but chassis wise you can definitely feel that it's been firmed up. So this is more precise, there's more body control. It's got the typical traits that you get in these 911s, so there's a really long reach to the, the gear lever, but the gearbox being... So you mentioned it was the first 911 in which they used the G50. That's right, yes. That's fantastic. So it's obviously easier to use. Um, I always forget what the other one is called, 915? The one in the normal SCs, yes, do you know? Yes, I, I can't remember. It's certainly a 9-1, I can't remember. 915, I think, yeah. something like that. But anyway, this is definitely much easier to use and also slightly shorter throw, because the 915 does have a very long throw. These engines, when you rev them through, they're just, they're, they're lovely. They're sort of turbine smooth. It doesn't feel to me as if there's any massive peaks in power, but certainly it pulls more at the top end. Yeah. Do you agree, Mike? As I say, after four and a half thousand RPM, it just seems to be happier and it, it feels freer yeah. and enjoying it. Now, the ride is actually fantastic. I mean, these small undulations, these little things, it just completely covers them through, doesn't it? It's a 
good compromise, I think. Uh, I've taken this round the Nürburgring, and the Nürburgring's quite bumpy. It fits the circuit really well. So a good compromise, you can drive it on the road, perfectly comfortable, and if you do want to do track days and what have you, the car doesn't disgrace itself on the circuit either. It's a commitment car. If you're going too quickly and you're not committed with the throttle and you lift, the car is going to get lift off oversteer without doubt. Yeah. Uh, so you break off a little bit more speed than you need to, but then commit the car with the throttle, the rear roll centre comes down and you will not get a better handling GT car than a 911. But if you don't drive it properly, you'll think the car isn't very good at all. It'll, it'll bite back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The throttle pedal is quite light. Um, yes. But there's a long, it's long travel though, isn't it? And um, as I mentioned a second ago, I can't heel and toe in this as much as I would like to. The steering is really light on the straight ahead, but then if you go into a corner, the more you sort of turn the wheel, the more it loads up. Yeah. Um, but it feels, it feels better than the other one. And I think that's a combination of things. First of all, I think because you put the smaller Momo, uh, Momo wheel on it, do you think it just makes the, the steering feel a bit livelier, really, than it was before? But also, it must be something to do with the suspension and geometry, because it just it just feels better all around. Yes, it I think just feels being taller. slightly lower, running a, a slightly more aggressive damper setting on them, uh, just makes the car handle so much better than the standard. So it's another car, maybe more than the sum of its parts, Absolutely. and then its mods. So there, yes. there are cars yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, my little frog eye is the same. It, it should be a horrible little car to drive, and yeah, you know, even at 30 miles an hour, it's just there's a there's a tactile feel to it, and there's a that feeling you get that you actually have to drive it. But no, this is really nice, Mike. I really like it. That's it's great. Uh, it has a character which I adore. Uh, yeah. Which is why I could never ever sell it. Yeah. I don't blame you. The second car, the E-Type that I always wanted, that came about really in the early 1960s uh, again. It was through a ride in a motor car with another person. My brother was racing motorcycles and at Brands Hatch he introduced me to Mike Howard who was a, a big star, he'd won world championships in 500s, 350s and so on. And Mike took me for a ride in this car and having seen Austin A35s and so on and so forth, this, this looked like a spaceship. It looks so beautiful. And again, I vowed I had to own one of these cars. And sadly, it took me, I'm 72 now, it took me until I was about 68 years old um, and really came about because my poor wife, Chrissy, uh, passed away with cancer and we sorted out our financial affairs and I thought well if I put um, the insurance money uh, and little bit of money we had in the bank into savings they it was going to do nothing the interest rates were so low I'd always wanted an e-type and it was really a nice in my mind anyway I thought that maybe if I got an E-Type, it would be Chris's legacy to me, uh, which would put a smile on my face from a very, very upsetting period of my life. I wanted a totally original, unrestored E-Type with a Moss gearbox so I could double declutch and everybody says they're horrendous to drive and what have you, but it's what I wanted. I, I wanted to go back to the early 1960s and drive an original E-Type. But it's gorgeous. It's, I love the colour. It's a 1964 a Series 1 fixed head coupe and it's the only Series 1 that they made in this colour. It's a beautiful blue but they didn't know what to call it so they just called it Special Blue. 
And on my heritage certificate, it's lovely to have the colour as special blue. There is no other E-type with special blue as a colour. Yes, it's not the greatest car in the world to drive, but whenever I drive it, it puts a smile on my face. It's a little emotional because I know I couldn't have had it if I hadn't have lost my wife. I could sit and look at it forever. I think the lines of an E-type Jaguar are perfection. In automotive design, it is one of the all-time best, in my opinion. This is a Series 1. Series 1, 1964. 1964, so this is one of the, the most sought-after cars, and it's the 3.8? 3.8 straight-six. Straight-six. Yeah. With three SUs, three large SUs. Fantastic. And um, there is no synchro, or the synchro's gone. I don't no, know no, if it, they didn't have, they didn't have synchro. So uh, you have to double declutch and so on. And obviously, I'm slightly nervous in Mike's pride and joy, um, but I will do my best not to crunch any gears. Perfect. What an iconic view. <laughs> You've got that amazing bonnet in front of you. We are in the British countryside. The, the sun is shining. I'm in an E-Type. Couldn't ask for anything more. Oh, nice and slow. Or double declutch. Even going up, double declutching then. Unless if you've got to do it slower. If you oh, right, if you don't. Okay. So the... Well, if you don't double declutch, I just blip the throttle slightly. And As you're doing it. Okay guys, so the, the gearbox is tricky, but apart from that, I'm already just loving this car. I mean, I, I like all, all old cars, and this isn't the kind of car which is gonna disappoint. I can tell already, because I love it already. Just these few meters, crunching the gearbox, <laughs> uh, putting it in the wrong gear, it doesn't matter. I'm already loving it. The steering is deliciously light and massive wheel tiny little thin rim uh, with wood it's nerve-wracking to drive but it is just a fabulous experience the engine is so responsive that is a huge surprise my car wasn't expecting that at all and not just from a standstill even now when we drove up it's really responsive throttle travel is actually not that long it's very light again and it immediately responds this feels like a really well sorted car as well though, a good example. Uh, I'm really lucky, it's absolutely original. Uh, I have the car looked after engine wise by Pete Lander of Sigma Engineering, who's only four miles from my home. Um, it wasn't quite right when I bought it, it was pinking slightly and so on. Pete got it sorted out and really it's a, it's a sharp car now. Fabulous, you sit quite high. Is yes. there actually any adjustment to lower the seat or is, it, no. is that that it, it is what it is. So for me, yeah, for me it's, it's quite tricky. I don't know if you guys can see, I'm having to kind of crouch over. It doesn't really detract from the enjoyment, but um, it is quite cramped for me. These were supposed to do 150, weren't they? But it probably yes. wasn't quite true. It wasn't quite that much. Or... I think the press car did. Right. <laughs> but it was probably not quite, not quite the same there. as all the others. Right. But, I'm sure if I asked it to, it would probably do 120, 130 miles an hour, I'm sure. And I mean, the, the seats are very much not sports car seats. I mean, they're really padded. They feel like little armchairs, don't they? You've got this incredible instrumentation in front of you that looks amazing with these old switches. And a cigar light. And a cigar. <laughs> you had to have cigars. <laughs> if you had an E-Type, you smoked cigars. The brake pedal has got it's got quite long travel, but it's... Yeah. Um, but they aren't particularly efficient. You get a lot of feel, though. Yes. The E-Type was never known for its brilliant brakes. Right. It's a classic case of let's get it to go quickly and we'll worry about stopping <laughs> another time, right? <laughs> it's a great double clutch, but just give a little blip as you go through. No, no, a little tiny bit. <laughs> Too much? <laughs> yes, it's just a... Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> right, 
right, do I dare try and put it in third? Just double declutch. Actually, I'll let go. I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave it because it's going to crunch. <laughs> I know it. I'm going to hand it over to you in a minute and you can show me how to drive it properly because I can't do it. Many changes. girls have said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, a few miles you'd be doing the same, you just get confidence with it. I'll take your word for it. I'm so lucky to own my 911, which I will never ever sell. Again, it puts a smile on my face every time I sit in it, and I'm privileged to drive it. And the E-Type, again, just puts a smile on my face. It's uh, an adventure every time I drive it. And I love the reaction it gives to other people. It's an iconic car. And how lucky am I to have the two cars in my life I've always wanted. Brilliant. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do comment, please do subscribe. Uh, and if you do need coaching, contact Mike. There is a, a, a website, I think. It's www.mikewilds.com. Fantastic. And I'll put that in the, um, in the video as well. So do go on that and have a look. And if you need some coaching, there's nobody better. Thank you very much. Today, First of all, we're starting off with this 911 SC. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, it's his E-Type and this SC. Why he loves CS. them. <laughs> CS. Why he loves them. Next, not to crunch any gears. Oh, no, you're not in gear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bring it back to second to it, stop yeah, it. To stop next. it and then first. Yeah. <laughs> back to 1960s. It, oh, hold on. I'm put it in gear again. So second CS. to stop Just it. To stop no, it. of course. And then, oh, but I didn't stop oh, it. Lived. So let's start again. So. Drop the push the clutch in. Yeah. We go into second. Yeah. And then to neutral, S and then be positive. And then straight up. Yeah. Okie okay, doke. So you didn't think you'd be doing tuition today as well? <laughs> I'm getting it free. You that was my, that was my <laughs> <laughs> that was my master plan all along. Oops. See, I get it wrong as well. <laughs> That's a really. 